fly bells. Oh, jeez, I explained that three times today. <laughs> today, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> We were in Santa Fe for a season, myself and my wife and one child, making pottery. A few months before we got there, an American Korean veteran that uh, was doing Korean wind bells was killed in a car accident. So shops and galleries that were selling his product were looking around, so they came to us and said, can you carry on? So I said, mm, I don't think so, I'm not interested in windmills. Also because they wanted Korean windmills. Then I started to fidgeting around and I came up with my own design. I enjoyed to do it for many, many years. I was doing lots of bells, thousands of bells myself. We strung, we, Jocelyn Bell and her thesis advisor in the late 60s, strung a whole bunch of wire on fence posts over the British countryside, creating a telescope that looked at low frequencies at the radio sky. And suddenly, because Jocelyn Bell was extremely persistent and paid attention to the slight little anomalies that were in the data. She found pulsars, right? A new phenomena. We have many, many examples of this kind of unexpected discovery on the basis of building something new, something that looked at the sky in different ways. For the Allen Telescope Array, we can expect that we might have as well such serendipitous, unexpected detections. We're going to look at the radio sky in a different way, and therefore we can be pretty confident that we'll discover something new and marvelous. Why did that particular voice strike me at age five, six, seven, eight, and make me follow this path that I've followed ever since? I've often wondered that, and I wonder if I'd heard Marion Williams first, would it have been the same thing? The older I get, I hope the more I am aware of synchronicity and confluence and call. And I, I don't know why I was called by whoever called me. Oh, 50 or 60 years later, I'm still doing windmills out of an accident. <laughs> the, the probabilistic universe is all over us. <laughs>